am in the picturesque Gainesville, Florida, a beautiful little town, which is of course attached to the University of Florida. Go Gators. And in the spirit of learning, let me ask you a question. What do a smoke jumper, an astronaut, the forest service, and a sycamore tree all have in common? Well, don't worry, I'm gonna share the answer. It's right this way, come with me. I'm Elliot Bambra. Everyone was saying, like, I've got to go and see this tree. Oh my! I guess you could call me a tree lover. And I first saw the trees! I love their history. It has that impressive canopy and also history attached to it. What a their cool science. Tree. Trees clean our air, our water. And the emotional connection <laughs> people have with them. To a tree that survived so much, it really hits you. That's why I'm traveling the country. I do have another tree to see, and they won't wait for me. In search of these remarkable, Tree Stories. As I arrive on the University of Florida campus, it seems fitting to head straight to the library to start my research. While the library is helpful, talking directly with the expert is what I found always works best. Dr. Jason Smith is here to tell me more. And would you prefer Dr. Smith? I'm a professor here in the School of Forest, Fisheries, and Geomatic Sciences at the University of Florida. There is a tree here on campus, not too far from where we're standing right now, that comes with an incredible history some strong lineage uh, and also a fascinating backstory. Platanus ocatentalis, or simply known as a sycamore tree. Standing 70 feet tall on the University of Florida's campus, this tree has been where no tree has gone before. The moon. Trees that were originated from seed that was taken up on the Apollo 14 mission. We have liftoff with Apollo 14, three minutes past the hour. So that mission was actually the third lunar mission. We had an astronaut by the name of Stuart Rusa. Originally, he was a smoke jumper. He was one of the you know, U.S. Forest Service uh, firefighters that um, had a connection with trees. That's one of the most dangerous jobs in firefighting as well. Absolutely. So when, when the mission was, was being planned, uh, he came up with the idea uh, to, to take seeds of trees with him. A collaboration was established between himself and some of his colleagues in the U.S. Forest Service. And they chose five different uh, species of trees. They established this, this project that focused on five species native to North America. The Douglas fir, the giant sequoia, the sycamore. They used sweet gum, which is another native hardwood, and they used loblolly pine. He didn't physically land on the moon with the rest of the Apollo 14 mission. He stayed back part of the crew that orbited. He kept the, the seeds in a, in, a, in a capsule, essentially. So he had these seeds packaged, there are 500 seeds total. The original idea here was to take seeds up, bring them back, germinate them and grow them, and compare them to seeds that were, that were left behind. Okay. And to see if there was any differences, basically. You know, the, the seeds that were taken up on this mission were, you know, were they impacted in any way by, you know, by traveling. The idea was to see, make sure there was no, you know, no threat to, to plants here on Earth. Uh, to make sure that no microbes you know, came back, that kind of thing. And uh, there was actually a, a bit of a, 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 an unexpected thing that happened. But when they brought that capsule back that the seeds were in, they opened them up in a, a room that had a vacuum in it. So the, the pressure was different. And they opened, so they opened that container and all the seeds came out and exploded all over the place. And so they had a big mess. First of all, they had to reorganize all the seeds. Yeah. Man, you know, I've, at Christmas I've exploded a puzzle set, and I know how difficult that is. I can't imagine, like, small seeds. Right, and they are tiny. By You're the way, right. yeah, I mean, some of these species have really small seeds. And then uh, there was a lot of concern about whether or not there would be any, any impact on their ability to germinate and grow. 
And so at that point they made the decision to send the, the seeds to other locations. And fortunately, there actually was a, a high survival rate. The seeds had good, good viability. The seedlings grew well. Certainly, we do know that a lot of those seedling saplings that were grown at the, the two facilities were then distributed to many institutions uh, between the years of 1971 onward. Um, it seems like a, a large number of trees were distributed and planted, uh, particularly in the year 1976, as part of a commemoration of the bicentennial. But unfortunately, since then, most of the information on the whereabouts of these trees has been lost or forgotten. Yeah, there are sort of these cryptic stories about trees be, you know, being uh, detected in locations as far away as like Britain, for example, where they, they now suspect there were a bunch of original moon trees planted because the seeds were distributed or seedlings were distributed there early on planted, but poor records were kept. And now they're like, oh, we, we found this little snippet or a little you know, letter from this person indicating that this is, a, this is an original moon tree. So now there's, there's more and more interest in you know, sort of tracking down the history and the, you know, the origins of these trees to better map that and to better track that history. Even though these trees were distributed across the world, the sycamore is native to the eastern United States. Proper irrigation plays an important role in growth and longevity. In warm climates, it prefers well-drained soil and moderate watering, particularly during its growing season. They can reach heights of 150 feet and can survive anywhere from 200 to 600 years allowing future generations to visit this tree for years to come. Why do you think there's a growing interest now in allocating and trying to find and preserve, protect, and again, I guess, study these moon trees? It certainly piques pe people's curiosity. I mean, just the name, moon tree, right? It's, it's like, cool. it, it is, it's, it's cool, right? Because like how many living organisms, I mean, other than people would have been to space, uh, do, we, do we have that, you know, you can look at something and say, wow, that thing, that thing's been, been, been in outer space, right? Even though most of the seeds survived space travel, exploding in a lab, and traveling across the country, the general public today basically has no idea these full-grown trees exist. Do you, do you think any of them realize what they're stepping by or who they're standing next to when they press that button that says, wait, now you can cross the street? Do you think they realize? I, I could venture a guess that probably nine out of 10 people, if not 10 out of 10, don't. Let's put that theory to the test. First, would you know what this tree is behind us? I have no idea. It's no. a sycamore tree, okay? okay? That's the first one. This tree behind us right here. Do you know anything about this tree? No. Do you want me to just tell you? Yeah. This tree has been to the moon. The tree? This tree has orbited the moon. What? What would you do if I told you this tree had been to the moon? Wait, I wouldn't believe you. You wouldn't believe me? Why would you not believe me? What would you like to see in front of this tree? Maybe a sign like that. A, a sign like that one? Yeah. Is there anything that impresses you about a tree like this that, that after you find out a fact like that? It's just surprising that they would just come and randomly plant it here of something that came from the moon. For various reasons, um, we have there has never been a, a plaque placed on the tree to, you know, to designate this tree as the moon tree. There's been debate about that over year over the years about whether or not it should be designated as such. Some people believe that it would be good for people to know that this is, you know, this is the moon tree and this yeah. is the, an important tree. These trees have gone where no other trees have gone before. Well, they have, and I think I think they they are certainly uh, good spokes trees for for their species, and I, I think we uh, we should. Tr we should celebrate them, absolutely. I think they do tell a significant story, and I think they, um, 
do connect us with our past, with our, you know, with our culture. Because of that, and because they engage the public, and because it gets the public interested and aware of the significance of trees. And I think, you know, those those things are are, are very important. And I think we should be telling these stories as a result. I think we should be preserve these trees because they are a legacy. They're a legacy to, you know, be, to these astronauts and to that, you know, foresight that they had to take something as significant as a tree seed into, you know, into space with them. I mean, they could have taken anything with them to, to space. They could have taken us. Right. They could have taken, we could have been, we could have been space heroes. Right. You and me. This tree has endured and continues to endure and shows the strength that trees in general have and that this tree has itself it's incredible to think what this tree offers and the stories it could tell us from space. This tree is an astronaut. Think about that. Healthy trees increase in value with age. They increase property values, beautify communities, purify air and save energy by providing shade from summer's heat and protection from winter's wind. Properly cared for, the trees we plant today could live for hundreds and hundreds of years. And of course, have their own stories to tell. Uh, he went on to do his, his graduate work in Wisconsin, which has a connection uh, to the crew here. Tree to Stories the, crew. Right, to the crew here. Now, uh, we're gonna have to get, now we're gonna have to get a shot of these guys, and, and the, these faces aren't made for TV, I mean, please. Right, so. I'm just kidding, guys. So, uh, <laughs>